Hi everybody, welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to install a wind restrictor in a C5 Corvette Coupe. Hi, I'm Jennifer and this is my new 2016 Corvette and you're watching the Corvette channel. So before I get started, let me tell you a little bit about wind restrictor. Wind Restrictor is based out of Dallas, Texas, and they do all of their fabrication and their manufacturing there at their plant in Dallas. They also offer 24-7 support via a web session through their website. So if you run into a problem after reading the instructions and watching this video, you can feel free to reach out to them and start a chat and they'll be able to help you. During regular business hours, they'll be able to help you also, but during the, the after hours, there is someone that you can still reach out to. Now, the product has a lifetime guarantee, and you're not going to be able to beat that. I mean, it's, it's, it just gives you that warm, fuzzy feeling that you know darn well that everything is going to be okay. And if you run into a problem, they'll take care of you. Just reach out to them, give them a call, let them know that you're having a problem, and they will help you. So, um, I just wanted to show you what it looks like in the finished product here. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to jump into this video now. We're going to show you exactly how to install it in a C5 Corvette. I'm happy to say that Wind Restrictor is sponsoring the Corvette channel. And in doing so, they've authorized me to be able to give you a 10% discount on everything that you see on their site. So I'm going to be posting a link and also a, a coupon code that you can use on their site or you can call into the customer service and order it that way and you'll be able to receive the 10% off. Now, let me tell you about the, the product just a little bit. The, the product is a genuine licensed product from GM, and they offer a whole bunch of different emblems and logos that you can put on it, or, you can, or they can help you make a custom one. They not only make them for the Corvettes, but they make them for other brands also. Uh, Chevrolet, Ford, uh, Mercedes, a whole bunch. So uh, check out their site. I'm sure that you'll really love what you see. So inside the kit, as well as the wind restrictor and all of the brackets and all that type of stuff, they have the four-page, five-step instruction manual, as well as if you've elected to get the uh, LCD multi-light kit, it will come with a separate wiring instruction sheet that shows exactly what wire to put onto the actual computer brain for the lighting kit. Um, if you did not do that, elect to get that lighting kit, you will not need that, um, that wiring, uh, wiring schematic and you probably did not get this in your box. Otherwise, you're just going to have follow these instructions, follow my video, you're not going to have absolutely any issues at all. So before we get started, I'm just going to go ahead and show you all the parts that you could possibly have with the, with the kit here. Um, if you elected to get the wind restrictor as a single color light, you would be getting the wind restrictor itself and then you would be getting the connector wire right there that's attached to it as well as uh, just the main wire right there, this, this one right here, just that goes straight to wherever, however you're going to uh, hook it up, whether you're going to be hooking it up as a third brake light or if you're going to be hooking up as a, th as a um, uh, on all the time or a keyed switch it would just be directly you know or you know straight to the battery however you're doing it um, in this case we're doing the uh, multicolor uh, with the remote uh, system on this one which you would be getting this controller right here as well as the remote for it and then you get you'll have both connections here where this actually is a, a quick disconnect and uh, you can see right here you've got this wire goes all the way up to the front of the car where it gets its power and then it has a plug-in and then this is connected to the brain of the uh, um, of the multi-light kit um, and in this we're also going to be doing a, a an auxiliary battery so you if you're at a car show or something like that and you don't want to have your key on you don't want to run your battery down this way you can actually just run off of this battery and you get this right here this is a uh, it comes with the the stick two-sided stick tape with the velcro 
and it has an on and off switch and the same plug that matches up. So this little guy here, which would normally be coming from the uh, wind restrictor, you can now plug it in into your car connection or you can plug it into your battery connection and then that way you could be at a car show for 10, 12 hours if you wanted to and, um, and you'd have plenty of power to run it. So it also comes with the alcohol pads. You're gonna need to wipe everything down before you, just, you go ahead and you uh, use the, uh, the stick tape for the brackets as well as the wire tap to be able to tap into the, there's a brown wire on the C5 that's up under the dash and we'll be showing you in that video that we, how we attach to that. And so you'll be able to tap into that wire. Also comes with the uh, white gloves uh, so you can hold the, the restrictor without getting your fingerprints all over it. And then it also comes with a free sample of the Brilliant Eyes, which is something that you want to use. It also comes with a wiping cloth. You do only want to wipe it down with this Brilliant Eyes. You don't want to use Windex or anything like that. It's too abrasive and it will actually scratch the, uh, the restrictor itself. The restrictor, the restrictor comes with a lifetime guarantee on it, but if you use Windex or something like that, you just voided your warranty because it, uh, it is too abrasive and it will scratch it. So um, I think that pretty much covers it. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna jump into the video and we'll go from there. Okay, so we've got Linda and Jennifer here and they are gonna go take the car for a drive before we install the wind restrictor. So that way we can get some before and after footage so you guys can see just how well these things work. So they're gonna go take the car now and then when we get done installing the, the restrictor, we'll do another drive and then that way we can show it off. So the first step that we're gonna do here is we've got a center mark uh, right here the, of the uh, template itself and we have a center mark right here on the plastic that we're gonna to need to attach to. So we're gonna actually line those two up. We've just pulled the, the sticky tape off and we're just gonna line those up like so. Right, right in there, there you go. Okay. You got your side? Yep, right, it's like so. Okay. All right, so now that we've got that going, that's where the bracket's gonna go how Terry's holding it there and it's gonna end up going like this right over here. Now what we have to do here is that we've got to take the, the, uh, ap the application, the, the primer, which is a uh, adhesive promoter, and we're going to go ahead and we're gonna pop that. There's a little black dot here, and you're gonna pop that, and you'll hear it, it sounds like it cracks. It's like so, okay? You squeeze that around a little bit, and then it will actually fill the, the fabric that's in the end of it here, and we're just gonna holding it down so it'll fill up and then he's going to go ahead and Terry's just gonna paint that on there. Now this will dry clear so you don't have to worry about it, but you wanna make sure that this, uh, that this stuff actually gets all over where it belongs um, so you, you make sure that it will be totally covered. Now we, we put this on and then we're gonna wait about two minutes or so. It's fairly warm today where we're at, so um, it's a little over 80, around 85 degrees, somewhere in that ballpark. So it's uh, it's gonna dry a lot quicker. But if you're doing it, um, you know, where it's colder, it'll take a few more few more minutes for it to cool, or for it to, uh, uh, to dry. So you'll wanna go ahead and wait, you know, just a couple minutes, that'd be good. Now while you're doing that, you now can take um, okay. You can throw this away yeah, now. You can throw that away, okay. you bet. And then what you can do is you can go ahead and the brackets themselves, they have a um, very, uh, I don't know what they call it, it's a very high density uh, adhesive. And so it's heat sensitive, so you would, you'll go ahead and you'll pull the sticker back and then you're going to go ahead and use the hair dryer to heat that up. Now I'm going to go ahead and plug the hair dryer in. And you can use a heat gun if you need to, but this doesn't take very long to do. So I'm just gonna run this for about 15 to you know, 30 seconds or so. Just heating this up. And my fingers too. Yeah, <laughs> so, sorry about that. Or maybe we can hold it off to the side there, Terry. Yeah, that would help. There we go. I'm sure I'm putting nail polish on. <laughs> So 
Well, why don't you use this one on that side? Yep. Thank you. And just shut that off. Air dryer there. We'll All wait right. until you get that one, then we'll do the other one. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to push it right up against where this where this bracket is. Now we're going to over a little bit more your way. That's going to come over mine just there. Right there. Okay. And then you want to press and, and hold, hold this for 90 seconds. And okay. you want to have a good firm grip on it, pinching it down. And then once these are set, then there's a uh, secondary hole that we the uh, the kit comes with two self-tapping screws and you'll go ahead and you'll use that's a 3 8 head on those and you'll drive those up through the back of the bracket over here in the back and you'll see that how we do that here in just a second. Um, that is an option to do but I highly recommend that you do that and we're going to be doing it on this one. Um, there's a lot of weight that's being held on this adhesive and so in the hotter climate areas, the adhesive will, uh, with all this weight hanging, will eventually give way. So this is a new design, um, and um, I think it was well, well thought, thought up, and it should work just fine. Um, we haven't had any since we've done this that we've had any problems with them, so it should be fine. Um, it, in, in case you guys are worried about the fact that you're having to drill a hole into the plastic, not really a big deal. It's a fairly small hole in the first place, but in the event that you decide you're ever going to take the wind restrictor out, you don't want to use it anymore for whatever reason, um, and you want to fill that hole, you can use a small rivet gun, uh, just a small rivet, and you know, and that'll just fill the hole, and then no one will even be the wiser that you actually had something there. So I wouldn't wouldn't worry about it at all. So that one should be pretty much done right there. So we can go ahead and we can do, do the other yeah. one. Scott. All right. <laughs> We're gonna figure out your hair dryer. That, hey, if you look at my hand, this I is don't Linda's hair dryer. Hair. Yeah. <laughs> In my other videos, you've seen uh, Jennifer's hair dryer. But, um, but you just want to make sure you get this this tape nice and warm. Which activates it really well. That should be good right there. Just like that. And then you're just going to hold it in place again for the 90 seconds. It's hot on my fingers, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Was yours hot? Mm hmm. Okay, I just want to make sure you're not heating <laughs> me up. <laughs> So once we get to the next point here, once Terry's done with that, um, we'll be able to climb into the back of the back behind the seats, and we'll be able to put the uh, screw up into the back of the bracket there. Um, now, one thing I did did fail to mention is that we took the top off the car to make it easier to get in and out of the car while we're doing this, and we moved the seats all the way forward. So we have some room to actually climb in there. So there is a pretty decent amount of room in a C5. Uh, I can attest to you that in the C7s they don't have that much room when you move the seat forward. But in here, there's gonna, there's you know almost a whole other seat in there. So you shouldn't have any problems being able to to uh, do this part of it. You could almost camp out in here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think that's good. Let's take these two screws. Okay, I'm just going to use a, a screw gun to put these in. It should be very simple and easy just by doing like so. That's all it is. They're self-tapping so you don't have to worry about drilling holes or any of that kind of stuff. They just screw right up in there. And you think I can get both of them from this side. <laughs> yeah, I can do it. I um, got it. Now the other thing is, guys, that um, you don't want to overdrive that screw in there. Um, as soon as he goes through, he stops it because he doesn't want to over tighten it. Okay. That's, all, that's, that's all you need. And that's all there is. Okay. So at this point, that part is done. Easy peasy. Okay. Now we can take this template off. We don't need it anymore. Right? There we go. Okay. 
And then at that point, um, you can, Terry, you want the honors, you want to put your beautiful white gloves on to, oh, grab, yeah, your, yeah. to yeah. grab your new wind restrictor, yeah. or Linda's new wind restrictor. It's, uh, this, these look like they're made for women. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I can get my fat hands in here, look. I can't even get my fingers there. There you go, you got it, stretches. What do you mean, look how fat that thing is. <laughs> So guys, I'm sure that you guys have recognized by now, if you've been watching any of my, uh, any of the shows, um, let me go over here so you might be able to see me. Um, so you probably have recognized Terry already. Uh, he helps me a lot with all of the different videos that we have going on. Um, and so this is his wife, Linda's car. You've, uh, you saw them get in the car, taken off. Uh, you should have seen the before uh, video already. Um, depending on how I, I edit this. Um, but, um, so this is their car, and um, so it's about time that we actually do some work to their stuff, right? They're always, he's, we're always doing stuff to, to my stuff, but, um, but we thought we'd finally, um, you know, get some stuff done to their car. So, and they're very excited car. about, yeah, to, <laughs> to her car, he makes that very clear, but she's very excited about getting this. Um, she, uh, she had a custom one done and it actually has uh, to support the Corvette channel. Uh, she asked for the Corvette channel to be engraved at the bottom. Um, so this is, a, this is a standard logo that you can get from, uh, from Win Restrictor. Um, hopefully you guys can see that. Uh, so normally it would just come with the flag and the Corvette, but she elected to have the Corvette channel put on there just to be able to help support the channel, and I thought that was very cool of her. So, and then, uh, you know, Wind Restrictor, they were happy to accommodate that, so that was really great. So, just wanted to say that. Th thank everybody for that one. You get your dirty so, fingers off of that's it. That's it. So, so now, once you've got that up there, you can see here that that just screws right in. They have these little plastic plates. They kind of sandwich this in here, which works really nice. And then you just put the nut back on. If you can work with gloves, and these gloves are not easy to work with. <laughs> you could probably take those off now, Terry. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm planning on it. Okay, and this is how you remove the gloves. All right. So that right there, guys, was as simple as it can get as far as you just, you don't want to over tighten these, you just want to snug them up, okay? Now, at that point, this thing is installed as far as the brackets are concerned. You saw how easy that was to install. Um, this part was probably the easiest installation I think I've ever done on, on a, uh, a wind restrictor. Um, so now, basically all we're going to do is we're going to take this wire that Terry's got there, we're going to tuck it up inside right there like he's doing. He's tucking it up inside the trim and it's going to go down that whole side and over down into the speaker housing. And um, I'm going to see if I can get a little better view of that. Okay. This, here, this stuff here, you can just pull it out just enough and this stuff is flat. It's not round, so it fits nice inside there. And you just kind of push it in there and just keep on working it all the way down. Till you get down into here. And if you keep pushing it in there, it'll actually hide itself. As you can see the trim right here, if you just take this little plastic thing that'll push the wire in there until you get down to in here somewhere. Okay, see what I've done is I just moved this out with this tool and just kind of keep tucking it down inside there. It'll fall down inside there. Like so. And just keep kind of working it down in there. Might be a little tedious, but it's no big deal this way but it'll be a nice installation because you won't see any of that once it's all up in here. Now we'll just go all the way back to here and slide it down in there. Then we take and just keep tucking this all the way back into here. So whatever you guys do, do not force it. Just take your time and finesse it all the way around and it will go, it'll tuck all the way in, not a problem. It's just if you get, you know, you get in there and you start trying to he-man it, it's going to end you just, up, you're going to yeah, screw up the wiring. So you just you're want to take it. stuff. Yep. So there is enough movement in there to be able to do it. You could could also go and do something like pulling, uh, pulling a pull wire from here down here. Um, we're 
taking the path of least resistance so we don't have to you know get our hands up in there and try to pull anything loose and break a clip or something so that's why we're doing it this way and we're just going to bring this right around there you go See? Get, once you get it in under here once you get it right under this part you can see it sticking out a little bit back here but you can just take and pull it gently and kind of push it back there and it'll slide right down and you will never see these wires and then you just kind of kind of work it all the way around I like it because it's got that flat wire instead of a round wire and it just slides right in all of this stuff will just slide right around this is all done and in here and you'll never even know it's there now I'm going to lift the carpet out and go behind the carpet right here this here this up and you can pull this carpet out a little bit it tucks in again real easy just enough to get the wire behind it like so and once you get it in here just tuck it right behind this thing. Now you just put this back and tuck it in. Now your wires are in place and under here is where we're going to put all the equipment. We're going to put it all in here with Velcro and sticky tape. And you all the wires, you have enough wire, everything, there's, everything will go right here. Then from that point, once we finish that, then we're going to run the wires that go up to the front so you can get into the power and that's going to run underneath this piece and underneath this rocker. I would like to thank Stephen over at Wind Restrictor for sponsoring this episode of the Corvette channel. So the next step guys after we've got the wiring uh, back to the back part of the, uh, the car behind the seat um, there is a separate uh, wiring kit if you're using the multi-light assembly multi-light kit there is a uh, wiring diagram to show you how the four wires that you would have uh, is going to plug into the LCD controller now if you have elected to just get the single light model which most people do um, you won't have to worry about this you'll just be plugging directly into the next step that we'll be doing which is just plugging into the power source so this is only in the event that you actually have the LCD controller and the battery and I'm going to cover both of those. So uh, again, I'm going to, the instructions, uh, they keep these colors pretty constant but you always want to double check the colors that they send you on the wiring here as well as what the instruction sheet covers. So every, every one of these that I've ever done, the colors are exactly the same. So I haven't run into a problem where they're different, but I just want you to pay attention to that. So in, in the event that they do change their color pattern, you would be aware of that, okay? So um, basically what we've got going on here is we've got four wires on this side of the controller, two wires on this side of the controller. This is where the, where the controller gets its power. This is the wire we're going to be plugging this small little plug-in into. This is going to allow us to be able to plug into either the car battery or to the battery itself that we have here, um, which is right, which is right here. Okay. So what we're doing here is they are marked. There's three channels and then also a power wire, and so we have uh, blue is channel three. Uh, the green is channel 2 and red is channel 1 so you'll just put those wires just in that order and then the black wire is the actual one that says V plus okay so all you're doing is just taking these wires you're putting them into the the um, into the connector it's like so you just want to take your time make sure you get it you get it in all the way and I went ahead and I had stripped these wires uh, off camera to make them a little bit longer to make it a little bit easier to install it. Um, so you just want to make sure that you get a good crimp on it, that it's nice and tight on each wire. Okay, and then the one other thing I want to point out is that this goes blue, green, red. If you look at the wiring that's uh, that comes from the restrictor, it's actually coming out um, where it's the wires are blue, green, red. Um, actually, oh, I almost I misspoke again. The, it's blue, green, red on the controller, 
but it comes out as blue, red, green in the order on the wiring. So you want to make darn sure that you get the red to red, blue to blue, green to green. So you'll have actual one wire that's actually crossed over. So just be aware of that, okay? And so we're just tying these up. We're making sure that these are nice and nice and snug. And once we've got that part taken care of, then we can move on to the little pigtail that's going to uh, allow us to be able to go from the battery to the car for power, which is this little guy right here. Okay. And you, all you have here is a positive and a negative. Your positive is going to be the center pin. The, the center wire is, is a white wire, which is your positive. And the, the um, wire that's acting as the shielding, I believe, is in, encapsulated in a black wire. So there we go. So once we've got that done like so, once we've got our wires all hooked up here, we can actually cheat a little bit and we can test this before we ever get started. A lot, if you don't have the battery pack, you don't, you're going to have to wait until you get completely plugged into the car before you're going to be able to know that this all works. And in this case, what we're going to do, since we have our brain, it's all wired up, we've got our plug-in, we've got our battery, we're going to go ahead and we're going to plug in the battery, just like so. We're going to turn the battery on, you're going to see the light light up. You can see that our controller came on. Hopefully you can see those, those lights on there. Then what we do is we take our, our remote control and we're just gonna go ahead and hit the remote. And I can see right here, I don't know if you can see it, there's a lot of light right here now, but it's lighting up no problem. So, um, yeah, there we go. You can see a little bit more purple now. You can see that. So it's, it does work. So we're in good shape. So now all we're gonna need to do is we're gonna just wire the wire up to the front of the car, get it tied in, and then this way, this little guy right here can plug into that harness and then we can run off of the car battery. Okay, we got the seat moved back so we can pick this up. This here, just pick up here and it's got little clips and you pop it out. Once you get that one out, you just kind of work it forward until you get to the next one and they pop out very easy. Lift it up like so and out she comes. Piece okay. of cake. We'll set that right under here for right now. Now we're going to take this off, which has got two screws in it. Okay, we got the, the two screws underneath here in this tan piece. And then these here, it's just a sensor back here, and they just pop off. Like so. Then they're over here, on this side, you pop your trunk lid and your parking lights. I think that's what that is. Mm -hmm. And these here, you pop this out, like so, and unplug it. Now, there's a screw right back here. Right back here. And that happens to be a T15 Torx. Okay. And get this out of there. There we go, that one. And then you come over here and there's another one right where you took this sensor plate off. And you take it out. And then it should just snap out and down. Like so. And like, come on. Here, I'm going to pull that out for me a little bit, Scott. Yeah, just that one. Got it? Yep. Yeah. Okay, now, you can leave this sensor in here. It's not going to go anywhere let it hang. You can just turn it up like that out of the way. And there should be a wire right under here, which is this brown one right here, I'm believing, is the one that we want to get connected to. It's the dark, it's the dark brown one. It's a dark brown yeah. one. It's a smaller dark brown. There's, it'll be the only dark brown one or in there. And we decided that we're going to use a self-tapping screw to put the ground into this. Right now, I'm going to put one of these ends on here. They don't come with this, but I want to put this on. It'll make a better connection. I'm just going to set it in here. Get it through where we can get a good start. I look so it just barely comes through there because you're gonna crimp right into it. Then we'll crimp this thing. That way it's a ground wire. I'm gonna take this self-tapping screw, which will go in there, I'm gonna screw it right into here. Okay. 
myself situated. Okay. Now, let me have the ground wire. It's through here. Now we're making it, we're taking the easy route by using a self-tapping screw. Um, if you wanted to use, uh, I think in the instructions it says that you can obtain a ground by uh, using the back screw or the back bolt that holds the seat down to the car. Um, or you can, you know, get into other, other grounds. Um, if you know where a good ground is on the car, you can go ahead and use that. It doesn't matter where you get it. We just uh, grabbed it off of a very easy place to get it. Now I got that one. Now I stick this guy in all the way. Give me this. And now we should have a connection. That's good. That's good. That's good. Close this up so it doesn't ground out anything. Okay, now what I would like to do is check it just before we go any further to make sure that we've got good connections by taking these two and plugging them together. Turn the key on. Actually, get up here, Scott. Hmm? Uh, do we need to turn the key on? Or no, there we go. And we've got power. We've got power. Everything's good. Okay, now all we have to do is start putting it all back together. We got now we're going to connect it. I'm going to feed this in just right behind this wire that comes through the door panel right here. Like so. We can take this and run it up into here and out of the way. Okay. What I'm doing, I'm wrapping it around there so when you pull on anything or something happens to get, you're not pulling all the wires loose. All I've done is just wrapped it around this piece so it can't be pulled out. And then it can go down here and right along the edge. Now this here can just simply sit right down inside the carpet, right just like that, all the way back till we get back here. What? And then this back, and we'll put all the dash back together. Now we'll just commence to putting this back under there. Pull that out. Hey guys, I'm pulling this this uh, part of the the uh, dash back so Terry can get that sensor up in there but you could pull this whole unit around the stereo loose if you wanted to and you wouldn't have to worry about this you could you know just okay. he, he got it to go in there there we go now let's put their screw back watch your fingers Scott you get this sensor back positioned where I want it okay Do it right there until I get this screw in here. But if you do pry it out like that, you don't want to pry it a lot because you'll end up breaking it. So we didn't pull it out that far, but you got to be very it. gingerly. Yeah. yeah, use a little finesse with it. Don't just yeah. You know, I'm the wrong guy. With <laughs> I'm the wrong guy with finesse. Okay. I want this wire to come out of here. Come on now. There you go. That's a problem when you got little fat fingers. <laughs> and again, all of it'll snap right, right in place, and it goes pr pretty easy. It's just you want to again use a little finesse. Don't force it. Don't beat it in there. It will, it will go in place. Um, just gotta, gotta find just the right spot. Keep working on it. There you go. I want to make sure I don't lose my wire. Right. Okay, there it is. Okay. And you can hear it snaps right in place like it's supposed to. It's just, like I said, you just gotta work it. knees up and 
other screws to tighten that up. And then we got this one over here. Okay, now we're putting the screws back in in the bottom to hold the dash up. There's one more over here. Put the sensor cover on on the other side now the last thing to do is just put the switch back in that controls the trunk and it just slides back together like so it snaps in now we're just going to slide this back in place This here we can take and I'm just gonna for my own reasons I'm just gonna wrap this around here to excess so it's out of my way and it just comes up here now again this excess you can do however you'd want to do if you wanted to tuck it in from the the front side of the uh, of the dash or you could tuck it under the carpet um, mm -hmm. Terry just wanted to be able to have that excess wire so he would have it. There we go. Now we lay the carpet down. And tuck it all back in. And we've got carpet all the way up here. Yeah. There we go. There we go. There we go. That's going to go down like that. That's all in, that's all in, and basically, there you go. Now we'll move the seat back. Linda's a little short one, so it won't bother her at all. But we'll see if we can get the seat back without it running into anything, which I'm sure you can. Oh yeah, it has plenty of room, as you can see. You can see right there, he's going all the way back and it's not gonna touch. So you look at that, so you got plenty of room. You don't lose any space that way. All right, so that should end this job. Perfect. So to get started, after we've got everything wired in, we notice that the, the wind restrictor itself is off. Now, when we wired it in and I showed you how to get to the brown wire, it's actually tying it into the running lights. So um, when you have your headlights or your running lights on, it's going to supply power uh, to the to the brain for the uh, wind restrictor to turn on and then you would be able to control it from the remote. Now the one nice thing about this is that the remote remembers what its last state was. So if you had it on and you had it doing whatever, whatever color it was set to, when you go to turn the running lights on, it's going to go back and resume what it was doing. You're not going to have to reprogram it. So um, I'm just going to reach over and I'm going to, don't have to start the car, nothing like that. I'm just going to literally just reach in and turn the running lights on. So as you can see right here, the, the wind restrictor comes on. I didn't have to do anything with the remote. You can see that I have it in a demo mode here. So I can go and I can adjust it to whatever I want. I can just hit the, the dial. Anytime I hit anything on the dial here, it just goes to whatever setting I have it set to. And so it will remember that the next time we shut it off and we turn it back on. So if you shut it off now, before you shut the system off, when it comes back on, the, the restrictor will not come back on. So you want to make sure that uh, when you turn it on, uh, you know, to hit the button on the remote, and otherwise you're going to go, wait a minute, something's broken. So just keep that in mind when you do it. I, on mine, I, what I do is I go ahead and I just leave it on. 
and when when I turn my lights on the system just comes on so anyway we're gonna be moving on to the actual instructions on how to uh, control the unit now that we've got power to it and we're in this mode here and I'm going to show you how to have it go into demo mode how to make it change colors and all that type of stuff so if you've elected to buy the multi-light kit then you will have received a remote control like this as well as the brain that we showed wiring it into the car and so I'm just going to go over basic operating instructions so you can see that it's on right now to be able to shut it off you would just hit the off button like so and then you would turn to turn it back on you just press the the one or the I letter okay and then you can move your finger around the dial here and you can change the color of the lights so if you want a more of a yellow or a bluish color or a purple or a red however you want you can move it right over to that area and touch it or you can dial all the way around the other thing that you can do, there's an intensity light. This right here at the bottom is the lower intensity. You can lower the, the light itself down by tapping it. You can see it's getting dimmer. And you can also hit it back up to bring it back up to a higher intensity. Okay. There's also two program lights and or buttons in here that makes it do different things. You can have it fade in and out. You can have it do a strobing. So you just by pushing this button, you can see that it's going to it's going to start changing colors here in a second. So it's changing different programs and it comes in the box of what it's going to do and you can see right there that it's going through a little little demo mode there showing the different colors and that's just changing it very fast. You can go into this button here and it will do other functions also. So just go through it and play with it and you'll be able to see that this just got so many different options you can do and it just looks really really cool yep smile <laughs> she's like <laughs> so does this stay up or you want this down you can leave that one just like that yeah now look, sit back from here can you see, yeah. tell me yeah you we can see you terry you betcha we can see you yeah, with the you see this part That's we can <laughs> we did we can see the wind restrictor absolutely but show them your hair so we'll show them guys this is exactly why lots the, of wind that's right we, that's we decided not we decided not to send terry and linda for the drive because you know <laughs> terry come over into the camera so we can show that a little bit see i don't think it was gonna go, do as really well for a before and an after for terry i don't know his gonna beard might same. come up in his eyes <laughs> <laughs> all right Not having it 
ever. That's right. As a girl. I just can't get over how we can hear each other. I know. And again, with Terry being, yeah, <laughs> he's going to be able to hear me. And anyway, I help him. I am so, so happy. What do you awesome. think? We did it with both the windows down and up, uh -huh. and of course it's more with the mutt, but it's like that you can hear each other talking. Yeah, that and, is amazing. And the wind, I mean our hair still goes, but yeah. not as crazy as it was. Right. You okay. know, but no, it does like great. Like I said, they made a product that cuts down on whatever percentage, and depending on the make of the car, I feel it's win-win. Yeah. Plus, it looks good. I mean, they're looking good. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, everybody likes them, that's for sure. They're beautiful. And I had the purple on, so. Very cool. Not your shirt, yeah, right? <laughs> well, tonight you'll be able to get to see it a lot better. And this bright sun, it's hard to see, but I mean, you still can yeah, kind of see, see it. it. Yeah. You can. When yeah. you were down going through the trees, I yeah. bet in the video well, you'll be able to see it. I think because the emblem is as big as it is, yes. right? And there's so much white in that emblem that you it does see actually it. can see it in the daytime. Hers, you mine, can. Mine are thinner. My lines are thinner, so you can't see it as well. But this one, I noticed right. right out the get go. So guys, thanks for watching. I hope you guys found that this video was helpful and informative and that it helps you when it comes time that you want to put your wind restrictor in your C5 Corvette. If you follow the instructions that they gave you in the box and you follow my video, you're not going to have absolutely any problem. But remember, they do have 24-hour support via the chat session. So if you have any questions, you have a problem, feel free to reach out to them. So again, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for supporting the channel. You guys have a great night. Thank you for watching the Corvette channel. Don't forget to hit subscribe.